Hello grooming fans, it is Damian again from Man's Best Friend channel and today we have this so sweet Maltese female and we're going to give her a groom and you may be wondering why is my video quality better and it is because I I am using my girlfriend's old phone, it is a Samsung S8 plus and it does not have the wide angle camera I accidentally in my last video I used the regular camera instead of my wide angle camera and I realized that it wasn't so bad and if I move a little back you can see what I'm doing and so I decided to use this camera because it is, it is better so let's just Start with clipping her nails. She's such a good girl, guys. And I'm using this Showtech stainless steel nail clipper. Okay. You can see her nails are, are pretty long. Guys, you have to clip the dog's nails. I mean, there are dogs that let's just say, say spent their nails while while walking, while running, scratching or whatever. But if they don't, you have to clip them. I don't care how stressful it can be, you have to do it because it affects their standing, it affects their walking. It hurts, they can maybe grow so long to even go into the skin. So guys, you have to do it. The excuse, my dog that does not like it, it's not valid. Again, when you're clipping black nails, you have to be extremely careful. As you can see, that is a little black spot in the middle. And that means that you don't have to cut anymore. I mean that you mustn't cut anymore. Okay, it's fine. One, two, three, four. And five, okay. And the back legs, guys. It is very funny how dogs react to me to me talking because first of all, they are not used to English. Second of all, they're like, who are you talking to? Okay, that is fine. And I use this. A little nail clipper for the edges. Sometimes I use it, sometimes I don't. Okay. So guys, today I want to talk about uh, what you, what can you do if you want to become the groomer, a ah, groomer. Sorry. And guys, if you want to become a groomer, just you should do everything that you need to become it. There is a lot of groomers that would say, oh, my job is too hard, it's better not to try and blah, blah, blah. I mean, every job is hard. This job is hard too. Okay, I'm using the 50 blade for the pads. Guys, every job on this planet Earth is hard and has its negative side and positive side. And if you want to become a groomer, you should give it a try. Don't let anyone say, oh, it's too hard, it's better for you not to try, or like this, or like that. And 
Um, I have to say that there are rumors that are successful and stuff, and I think that it is about that don't they they don't want a competition, and everyone that asks them like how's business, can you make enough money after grooming? They would say, oh, I work all day, and it's the hardest job on the planet, and I would not recommend it. Guys, they're lying. You can make a living from grooming, especially if you're a good groomer. It is a hard job, but every job is hard. So guys, if you want to become a groomer, it is excellent that you're watching it. Like, grooming videos to see what it's all about and it is great to watch videos like this one that are let's just say realistic I mean full that you're watching full groom videos and see every side of grooming okay and when you decided that you want to be a groomer, you have to find a teacher or a grooming course or whatever. And you have to choose wisely your teacher. Because there are a lot of grooming teachers that are bad groomers. They're just being a grooming teacher for money and they will not teach you anything. I mean, they will teach you something, but that won't be enough for you to be a groomer and make a living out of it. And guys, when you start your grooming course, um, the first thing you're going to learn is how to bait a dog. It's not that complicated, but there are some things you need to know. And after you learn that, of course, when you bathe the dog, you're going to dry them. And then you learn brushing. Brushing the dog with the blow dryer on. And that's the, se the second thing, at least in my country. The next thing you're going to learn is how to shave the pads, the hair between the pads, how to shave the sanitary area how to clean dog's ears and how to trim the nails and or if it's a poodle how to shave all poodle, poodle feet and how to shave the nose okay i'm going to use it, this ear stick and the ear cleaner just to clean this ear a little bit so guys when you're when you when you learn how to do that then you take the clipper and first you learn how to groom with clippers and after you learn that then you take the scissors so grooming courses i mean grooming schools usually take around 6 months here in my country in serbia but my recommendation for you is that you that you stay as long as you can with a more experienced groomer. Why? Because you cannot learn learn everything in six months. You can learn the basics, but if you stay with a groomer who's been grooming for ten years or twenty years, if you stay with them for another two years or I don't know three years or even one year you can learn a lot a lot more and guys you you will learn the most when you when you start working for money Why? because when you're working with when you have your customers when you're I mean charging your work because when you're starting the grooming lessons of course you don't charge your work there are volunteers to take your their dog to you and
this was the hemostats for an alcohol guys and I need to dry them and when you start working for money then the, then the real thing starts I mean that's when you learn the most and when you're giving your best so my advice to you when your grooming school is done don't go and open your own salon right away as I said, be with a groomer who's been grooming for, I don't know, at least 5 to 10 years and you will learn a lot. And be patient guys, this job requires patience. I mean everyone, every job does but this one especially. Because you have to be patient with dog, with clients, with how you're improving and everything will come okay the ears are done sorry guys and guys I, I'm talking about this because there's a lot of rumors here in Novi Sad in Serbia and when people who do not groom ask them oh I see your rumor do you think I can do it they were like no. they can be like no, it's better not to try, you won't, you won't make any money, blah blah blah, and that's not nice. Okay, so we're going to shave around her anus with the 30 blade, I mean, no, this 15 blade. And guys, the hardest thing, the hardest thing about grooming are clients. Because, I mean, 95% of my clients are great clients, are very correct. But there's always that 5%. And I mean, I'm going to use a template now. And I mean, every groomer is going to say that. That the it's harder, the hardest with the client. Wait, I'm doing this part right now because guys, there are a lot of owners that not brush their dog, that have an aggressive dog, and they're expecting of you that you do the fancy haircut with them, with their method here, and, uh, and with their aggressive dog, and that you charge like you done. A dog that is not aggressive and not matted. And I think that that is the hardest thing. Again, I'm so gentle around the nipples. You can go over them, but you have to be super gentle, guys. I mean, like, there are aggressive dogs, but there are, there are nice dogs that are trained, I mean, disciplined and won't make you a problem at grooming. So, don't give up after you, after the first aggressive dog comes to you, or a too massive dog, or I don't know. You have to be careful with aggressive dogs. Especially, especially if they are big dogs. Honestly guys, if the client calls me and says I have a big aggressive dog, I won't do it guys. Because if you have a dog, and especially, especially if you have a big dog, you have to guys, you have to make sure that that dog is not aggressive. I mean, Big dogs are a responsibility, 
and big, bigger dogs are even more responsibility. So you cannot have a Husky or a American Stafford or any, I mean any big dog and let them be aggressive. I mean you have to be a little rough with those. They need to know who's in charge, they need to know who's the leader of the pack. You don't, I mean, you don't have to be too rough on them and, I don't know, beat them up and stuff like that. But they need to know, guys, who's in charge. That you're number one and they're number two. So my recommendation is, if the owner calls you and says, they have a big aggressive dog, dog, and they want them, they want you to groom them, is to say no. And just say, I don't know, I cannot help you, sorry. And guys, I'm not now using the eight and a half blade again. Most people are using seven on the body. I'm always, I'm not always, but almost always using eight and a half. This is eight and a half. This is a seven blade. Difference is 0.4 millimeters and cannot be that easily spotted and it's, it's much easier and safer to shave the dog with the eight and a half blade. This is a Moser blade and let's just begin. The owner wants it short. I mean, he wants the head short too, but not like too short. And guys, you always, always do what the owner wants. I mean, not always. And if it is safe for the dog, if it does not affect the dog's health in any way, and the dog wants this Maltese to be all short, I would do all short. I mean, don't be a groomer that the owner says one and you do the other because you do not like his request. I mean, hair is hair, it will grow back, it's just hair. You should not be making a big deal out of it. And guys, one more thing. Dogs do not care how they look. They do not care if they... If you miss the spot, if you... If everything is not, like straight and nice and clean, they do not care guys. All they care about is that they are clean, they are not matted, it does not hurt them, they should not scratch them, and that's about it. We make dogs beautiful for the owners, not for the dogs. Dogs are not like people to, to care about those things. And guys, this is just a shave before the bath. I'm going to clip this again after the bath to make it nice and even. Again, I'm using this Heininger cordless clipper. It is great because it has two batteries. Every battery can run about one hour and you have a charger with two places and with, with, because you have two batteries one can always be on the on the charger and you always have a full battery. Yeah? I think that every groomer should, should use the cordless clipper but I know that there are groomers, they are old school, they are not used to those let's uh, say fancy clippers and stuff but it is fine use what you want i'm hoping that you can see the whole dog like they took a step, step back because this is not the wide wide angle, angle camera you can see she's so so nice Okay, let's just do this kind of here.
always be super gentle with a, with a dog skin like her. As I said in my last videos, I mean, the skin of the dog, the harder it is to clip them. Because you have this green skin, they are bony, and you can, there's more chance of hurting them with the clipper than if they are little, ch little chubby. That's why you have to be super careful, especially around areas like this. I'm going to do the armpit with the template later. Okay. Make sure that the blade is not too hot. When it is, change it. And first take, I'm taking this. And this cool care spray. It's a coolant, disinfectant, lubricant, cleaner and rust preventer. And just going to spray this the other side. Okay, just spray it on my comb. And take the nest, take the nest next eight and a half blade. Okay. This dog is like, what is going on? But she is super nice guys, I really love her. I'm hoping that you can see what I'm doing. Again, this is not a wide-angle camera. This cell phone does not have one. I'm still paying money for a GoPro, and I can't wait to buy it because I know that my that my videos will be better, much better. Again, guys, thank you so much for the support for my last videos. It means a lot, especially uh, when, let's just say I'm in, at the beginning of my YouTube career. And guys, the next thing I want to add up about if you want to become a groomer is that this is a job of the future. There's the number of the dogs in the world are, in, are increasing rapidly. I mean, it is almost in every country. And that means that the world is going to need more groomers. And if you are going to be a good groomer, I assure you, you're going, you're going to have enough, enough work and you're going to have enough money. Only, but only if you do your best. Okay, I'm, not, I'm just going to take the stem blade and do more around the stomach because I don't want to risk it with the seven, I mean with the eight and a half. You can see how clean the skin is. You have to be super, super careful. And guys, accidents can happen. I mean thank thank God I never had a big accident when I cried injure the dog seriously but little scratches is something that can happen to every groomer guys i mean the groomer who says that they never scratch the dog or for example cut the nail too short 
this line, guys. And I don't, don't want to do that with you. I want to be honest. Okay, we adjust to the armpit. Next one. This is a ten blade, guys. And it is a, it is probably my favorite blade because it cuts short, not too short. It's much safer than the seven and eight blade. And I just love it. But. Don't think that you don't have to be careful with those sets. Because you have to be careful even with this, the shortest blade, guys. Okay. Think how skinny she is. How glingy this skin is. You can easily, easily hurt it. So it is better to take the short, shorter blade and make this shorter than to scratch the dog or cut it or I don't know. Okay, we are good for now. I am going to continue filming after the bath because I don't want this video to be too long, so guys, see you after the bed. So, we're done with bathing, we're done with drying, and with brushing her tail and her head. And we're going, as I said, to shave her, I mean to clip her again. But, for the start, I'm going to take my curl scissors and do the paws. It's something, it's something that I usually do before the another shave down. I do this and then I take the template and do everything that I need to do with the template. Okay.
Okay. Let's just take the brush and brush this up. What it does, it takes the hair between the fingers and puts it up. Okay, again. Okay, next one. You have to be super careful because dog can move. Okay. And last one. Okay, as I said, I'm going to do use the template and do everything I need to do. I mean, the danger zones. <laughs> with the template, okay. Actually, I'm going to do as much as I can in the pen. Her breasts are big because she had babies like a month or like a month and a half, I don't know how much exactly ago. And I want to be super careful with them. Okay, so I'm taking the eight and a half. Taking my slicker brush. Okay. And brushing this up. 
And why I'm this brush? I'm brushing this up because the hair is down. The clipper won't won't grab it, and if the hair is up, it's much more easier for the clipper to grab the hair and to cut it. And guys, my advice to you is when you do one part of the body, get this part done and then do the other. Don't just, I mean, I'm not sticking to this rule, but don't do this leg a little bit and the body a little bit and this leg and then come back to the leg. When you're doing the leg, finish with a leg and then carry on. Sometimes you cannot stick to this rule because, for example, when the dog is aggressive for the legs, you're probably going to start grooming his leg and then make a little rest while you're grooming the body and then come back to the leg and blah blah blah. But if a dog is nice, as nice as she is, try to do it that way. Okay. And it's so hard to do it when the dog is skinny, I said it before. Okay, I'm going to do the body now.
Guys, if you want to be a groomer, it is important that you work out if you are grooming. Because this job is a killer for your back, for your neck. And if you do not work out, if you do not stretch, you're going to be if you have a problem. Okay, the other side. Guys, I'm sorry for being so quiet, I just need to focus as much as I can.
ici. And she's so scared, guys. I don't know why. Okay. Guys, this really is not easy. I mean, if this part is boring, be free to skip ahead. But I have to be slow and careful, and that's just the way it is.
can see how she moves her leg when I brush it. She's so sensitive about her front leg. And with that, she's skinny and all of that makes the work even harder. Sorry guys, if I get too close, I just need to get my head close so I can see better. I know that this is not a wide angle camera and maybe you're not seeing the best, but sorry. You can see how she pulls, how bony she is here and skinny and guys, this this is difficult. I may be complaining a lot, but it is. See how she moves. And you can see guys, she's not, not aggressive, she's not mad. At, and you can still have difficulties. And Guys, see, this was a Bichon because Bichons have curly hair and it's much more easier to do this. She, she would already be done at home and with her owner. Or if she is, if she is chubby, a little fat, it would be much easier. But it is what it is. And this is like a one negative side of woman when the dog is skinny, like a Maltese sensitive about his front leg and you want to do the best. And guys, I hope that one day I'll get a comment or more comments like uh, like I watch your videos, I saw what grooming really is from your videos, I listened to you and I decided to become a groomer and now I am a groomer. And that make it make me so proud and happy and I'm really hoping that one day I'll go get one of like one of those type of comments. Guys, the reason why I, why I talk in English and not in my, uh, how do you say it, native language is because you're much more paid if your viewers are from, I don't know, USA, U, UK, Australia and some other countries than when your viewers are from Serbia and, and I have to be honest that is probably the only reason why I'm talk, why I'm talking English because I know well when I was a YouTuber like four or five years ago and I only talk in my native language the Serbian I could run like a 0 0.07 or a 0 0.1 dollars per thousand views and it is just too little. It's nothing and maybe sometimes it even went to 0 0.03 dollars per thousand views. And you really cannot make some money out of it then that's because 
That's why I'm speaking English. And of course, when you're speaking English, you can be worked and understood from a lot of countries from around the world. Of course, that is a reason too. You can get more, more views, more, more. How should I say it? Public, more. <laughs> followers and stuff but the main reason is the profit guys and it's okay for now I okay let's going to do the tail where is my comb I'm just looking for it okay let's comb the tail down, hold it. You have to at least hold your fingers fingers at the end of the tail, if not further away. So we want to cut the tail. And the owner said he wants short, but not too short. We're going to sorry guys. Listen to the owner. Now I'm going to work on her head. I'm going to take the 15, go around her eyes. And it's always the best to do to take the clipper and do around the eyes because it is the safer thing guys, trust me. You can do much more damage with scissors than with clippers around this area. And it's better to get this this area clean area clean. Okay, and I'm gonna take the scissors, call everything right here, and okay. Now I'm going to use comb attachments, my lovely comb attachments. I'm using a 50 blade and I'm going to take 5 mm comb attachment. It is the shortest I, that I have. And just go down the here.
and the owner did some grooming by himself and that's why the cat is not even okay that's it for the comb attachment I'm just going to take my shears Again guys, I have about 3000 subscribers on a channel that has only 30,000 or 35,000 views because I've used this channel like 5 years ago for fitness videos and I got to the point where I had a little more than 3000 subscribers and then I deleted all the videos and lost some subscribers and when I decided to make a YouTube channel for dog grooming I was like why shouldn't I use this channel and that's what I did Let's just blend this. Guys, I'm thinking about and when I when I <laughs> when I make my next videos that I just film the shaving before the bed and then and then grooming the head and the tail. Because I think that this video is uh, too long and maybe it's not funny to watch me straightening up after the bath. That it, that it is interesting to watch me shave the dog before the bath. So let me know what you think.
Sorry guys, I need to text the owner. Tell them that we are done in like 10 15 minutes. Okay, let's carry on. When you're doing a dog's muzzle, the best thing you can do is close their mouth because they can stick their tongue and get injured and the owner said he wants the head short too but not too short and I think that it is already short enough I'm going to do it a little more.
Okay, let's just do the ears. Okay guys, this is taking too long. Okay, let's just do the eyelashes a little bit. And she is done. Guys, thank you so much for watching my video. 
I hope you that you enjoyed. If you have any recommendation about what should I change about my videos, please tell me. And again, thanks for watching. And see you. Thanks for watching, and see you soon.